Hey everybody, I'm Scotty J. Welcome back to Rock Titan Live. We have an awesome guest with us today. You know, not that this should be a surprise to any of you people by now, but I have to say, all right, full disclosure, this is one of my favorite musicians on the planet Earth, all right? It's been a couple of years since we caught up with this man. It was in Philadelphia at Harris Casino, and we caught up with his guitarist as well, who is uh, one of Philly's own, Brian Quinn. You all know and love him from Octane and Foster Child. Absolutely awesome dude. But um, I easily, I easily wore out the first couple albums from this guy's band. Easily. You know, singing in the shower, singing in the car, you name it. But uh, he's got a brand new single out right now with the brother of an absolute legend who I revered and I'm sure all of you have too. Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Martin, frontman of Candlebox. Kevin, how are you, sir? <laughs> Good, that's a hell of an intro. Thank you, dude. Yeah, well, it's been a couple <laughs> of years. I've been honing my craft, as have you. Yeah. Yeah, so how's life, man? Life is uh, strange. Um when you don't know. Uh, yeah, that's a, a missing person song. Um, life is strange, man. Uh, I have been home now longer than I've been home in uh, 12 years um, with no touring in sight until the spring or summer of next year. Um, so it is, uh, it is a really weird time for me. And I think for all the musicians out there and, and um, everybody in general, you know, um, it's just kind of like, uh, you know, what, what is this? What hit us? When's it going away? How are we going to cure it? Um, when are we going to be able to see our friends, our family? I've lost three friends to this stupid disease called COVID no. um, who got it, got it early on. And, and it really, it, it just devastated them. Oh. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it is, uh, it, I'm, I wear a face mask everywhere I go. I wear gloves when I go to the grocery store. I mean, it's, it's weird times, dude, but uh I'm healthy, as are Good. you, which Good. I'm happy about. Right on, right on. Where are you located? Los Angeles, beautiful LA. We'll okay, see. all right. Yeah, I wasn't sure Background what your locale was these days, but uh, SoCal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you got a brand new single out, man. And I know that we were joking last time because, of course, we were talking about disappearing in airports. And, uh, you know, you're just like, yeah, man, this thing still has legs. We're going to squeeze this thing for all it's worth, you know, because it had been a couple of years running. But yeah. uh, so you got a new single out now uh, called Let Me Down Easy. And it's funny because I was actually thinking when I first heard the song, you know, and I saw the title of the song, Let Me Down Easy, I'm like, I thought that's what my wife was going to do to me when I proposed to her. But uh, we celebrate our 20th wedding anniversary tomorrow. So obviously that was not the case. Thank you, sir. Yes. But uh, it was awesome song, man. I loved hearing a different side of you. It was, it was very much a different style. And like I kind of touched on in my intro, this was a collaboration with uh, the brother of someone I know very near and dear to our hearts, closer to you than me, because you actually rubbed elbows with the man and much more. But uh, we're talking about Peter Cornell, the brother of Chris Cornell. And uh, Peter co-wrote this song, Let Me Down Easy, with you, yeah? Yeah, he. Uh, I, I've known Pete since um, you know the late 80s, early 90s in Seattle, and played shows with him and his other bands back in the day. Uh, but we, you know, uh, I guess as most people do, just kind of lost touch with one another. And a couple years ago, I hired his man, uh, his wife is my manager, Amy Decker. She was managing Chris as well okay. uh, to be my manager. And uh, Pete and I reconnected and just started talking. And I, I was, it was really nice to be able to catch up with him and, and like, God, it's been a long time. What have you been doing? You know, how are you? What's happening? And, and, uh, and I said, look, I'm making this record that I kind of want to feel loose and, and loud, like a, uh, Neil Young, Rest Never Sleeps, Crazy Horse kind of a record. And I want something that's bluesy and swampy. And I would love to get something from you because that's what he's really good at. And um, he said, let me see what I got. A couple of days later, he sent me the song on acoustic and it felt exactly like it feels right now, this this full band version. It just, it had everything that I wanted in a song and it inspired so much into me to, to write about um, that I knew that it was going to be, I knew it was going to be great. Um, I, I think everybody's loving it and it was a catalyst to kind of get me started on really writing the rest of the record and finishing this record up. So I was 
so grateful for Pete to, to actually um, take the time to, to give me something that, you know, not only is, a, is a, in my opinion, a great song, but to, to rekindle my love for, for rock and roll music. And um, it's dirty, it's gritty, it's swampy, it's bluesy. Uh, and it's got a lot of, uh, got a lot of his soul in it, a lot of my soul. And I think maybe he's may have excised, uh, exercised a little bit of his demons with this track as did I. And um, awesome, yeah, I, I, I love it. I love it. Thank you very much for, uh, for chatting with, with me about it. Yeah, no, well, I, every, the way you just described that song is, I couldn't have described it any better. I mean, that's exactly how I felt about it. And, of course, you know, and it's funny. And we'll talk a little bit more about, you know, since the last time we caught up. But you referenced the kind of isolation we've all had and the downtime we've all had. And I know by now you've got a full Candlebox album done. It is done. Yes. It is ready to launch but we're going to wait for the right time. Timing is everything, as they say. And right now, no one can, um, you know, support any of the music live the way they would like to. And I know that you guys live for that kind of thing. Um, but the last time we talked, you're like, I'm never doing a full-length album ever again. Never. It's, it's <laughs> I all, tried. EPs, EPs, that's it. EPs, singles, that's it. That's all I'm doing. So yeah. can we expect, like, not only a full-length album, but potentially a double full-length album with all the time that you've had to write? <laughs> uh not a double full length but you, the, okay. yeah the full length is uh, 11 songs they're done um yeah. they're, they'll be out sometime in the spring next year uh we are doing um all these kind of cover songs which we did um you know for what it's worth by buffalo springfield um we're we're doing one by u2 we're doing under pressure by queen we're doing running on empty by jackson brown uh we're doing uh, don't stand so close to me by the police we're doing ventilator blues and shine a light by the stones so that will probably be something that we give with the package um you know all those versions of these songs that we're going to be releasing as uh, the video compilations as well so um and we have a couple of b-side tracks that um that we've talked about kind of finishing up on our own um, and sending to Carson and Grant who mixed this record and also did disappearing in airports uh, to have them mix up the, the B sides. So yeah, with the downtime comes, um, you know, idle hands uh, are the devil's uh, play field. So we're, we're trying not to be uh, devils with this. We want to be um, somewhat uh, 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 what's the word prolific, if you will. Um, and, uh, and put out some quality jams, you know, uh, yeah, well, if, I, if if it wouldn't be overly dramatic of me to fall off my chair, like you just blew me off my chair, you know, with some of the spoilers you just gave, I usually try to be very careful about spoilers, but uh, it's you, Kevin, you know, you just gave, <laughs> you know, there's nothing left to the imagination anymore. Man, that's awesome! You are taking on some serious classics, man. We are, yeah. Oh my God, I love it. And, uh, you know, of course, we were just talking about the lineup that you got working on this new masterpiece. Oh, my God. Oh, I wish I had it right now. This sucks. I'm not going to be able to sleep now, man, because I want to hear this so bad. Oh. Well, you're friends with Brian. Brian has the record. You know, you could probably call him up and he'd slip it to you. I'm going to go knock on his door. I'm going to violate the <laughs> six feet. I'm going to be like, you know, I'll wear a mask. I'll wear a mask. Be like, Brian, Brian, I was just talking to Kevin. You got to give me that album right now. I got to hear it. But the, yeah, so yeah. Brian is still with you, like we talked about. Yep. But the last time we caught up, Robin Diaz, awesome drummer, um, you know, and, and, and a good friend to everybody, nice guy. He was with you on Disappearing in Airports. But now, uh, at least for this album that's, you know, going to come out here in the next six months, at least, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You got the man, Dave Cruzen, back with you. That uh, you know had been on a couple of Candlebox albums, and of course is very well known for being on uh, Pearl Jam's debut. So, uh, mm -hmm. what was it like having him back again, working on this with you? Well, Dave's actually played on the last five Candlebox records. Was it that many? Okay, Happy, All right. Happy Pills. What? Right, right. You had Into Happy Pills, and you had uh, Into the Sun. Into the Sun, Love Stories and Other Musings, okay. Disappearing in Airports. The last five records and uh, and um, this one, which is called Wolves. Well, don't I just suck at my research? I have, no, Robin good. feels like a lot of time. So uh, Dave 
uh, had surgery last year. No, Dave had surgery last year. So that's why uh, uh, he wasn't playing the shows with us. Um, he had, uh, he had a tendon surgery in his arm. Okay. And um, so Robin fills in when Dave's, when Dave's not touring with us, but Dave does our records and, and it's, you know, it's uh, magnificent when he does. I mean, it's, awesome. he's got the pocket that I, that I love about uh, rock and roll and he's, he's the guy for it. Cool. Cool. Right on. Well, let's get back to Peter, man, um, because I think it's so awesome that you worked with him on this album. And of course, you know, we're, we're only a few years removed from the loss of an absolute legend who I know you were very close to. Um, I have to bring something up, Kevin. I have to bring this up because when I saw this, I was so incensed. I mean, like genuinely pissed off. Um, they put a statue up of Chris Cornell and rightfully so in Seattle, you know, the birth of the grunge movement where all you guys, you know, really came out of all of you. And so he's got a, a righteous tribute, you know, statue and it gets defaced, man. I flipped my lid. Like I literally lost it. I'm like, I, I don't care what anyone's, I don't care what the cause is. I, there, there's no justification for something like this who gave so much to the world in more ways than one. What are your thoughts on that, man? Well, I, you know, I think that there are, no one does, you know, no one deserves, um, no one deserves what's happening right now. Um, I think there's a lot of men mental illness out there. I think there's a lot of frustration. There's a lot of anger. Um, defacing, you know, a statue uh, of Chris or a statue of George Washington, you know, or anything like that, I think is, um, is a sad reality uh, because people are angry. Um, I don't agree with it. I, I, I certainly don't. Um, I don't know why they would even, you know, choose to, um, you know, seek out, Chris's statue and, and do something like that. There are plenty of other monuments in Seattle that you could tear down uh, or deface, um, you know, but people are angry and, and, and of course there are opportunists and, um, and there are idiots everywhere and, um, and you can't fix stupid. And if somebody's stupid and they're going to do something stupid, they're going to do it. Um, I think we're seeing that on a daily basis, obviously um, the world we live in is, um, is mayhem. Um, I only heard about that um, last week. So I really didn't, I think it happened actually a couple of weeks ago, right? Two, three yeah. weeks ago when all the shit was going on in Seattle. Right. So right. Um, I'm, I've been trying to avoid that type of news as much as I can. Because um, sure. I tend to open my mouth and get myself in trouble with it. But I don't agree with it at all. I think it was a stupid thing. And I, I don't even know why, the, you know, whoever did it probably got a ton of shit from his friends for doing it. Um, and hopefully that's the case, you know, but um, you know, like I said, you can't fix stupid. And there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of sick people out there right now that, um, don't really know they're sick, you know, and, um, and there's a lot of hate and anger in the world and, and, uh, I don't know how to fix it. You know, it's, um, it's frustrating. I, I, I wish I had, uh, I wish I had magic words or, or, or a magic wand or, or something that I said made, you know, the whole world listen, but I, I don't. Well, you actually do, Kevin. You actually do, because it is through your music, my friend. I mean, that is what your music does. That's what it's all about. So, I mean, that being said, and I, and I just, you know, because I know your history with, with Cornell and, uh, you know, and working with Peter on this. So I just, I just wanted to gauge, you know, how you felt on that. Because I know for me, all I've ever been able to do is appreciate his music. I've never been able to meet him in person. But I know what a tremendous humanitarian he was. I know some yeah. of the causes that were so very near and dear and close to his heart that everyone should care about no, uh, no matter what you believe in there was yeah. no way you could not agree with everything that chris cornell stood for there's there's just no way around it otherwise you're just a lousy human being i'm just going to say it um well there are a lot of lousy human beings out there <laughs> true that so but working with peter um how is did he remind you in any way like working with him uh is he like Chris in any way, shape, Very or form? Very much so. Yeah. Very much so. He sounds like Chris. Uh, Peter's Peter's the older brother um, of the Cornell family. Um, all of them musicians. All of them incredibly talented. Uh, and and Pete, I think um, maybe was you know it's interesting. I, I I think about it all the time. You know, there's a saying that you know sometimes the light shines brighter on uh, on on other. Um, 
you know, people in the same era, in the same area, in the same town, in the same neighborhood uh, next to one another. Um, and Pete was, you know, writing those songs uh, very similar to what Chris was writing, but Chris was playing drums and Pete was playing guitar, you know, and so Chris didn't step out behind the kit, I think, until uh, 1984 or 85 um, oh. as a, you know, drummer singer and then became a, you know, a singer and then picked up guitar and learned how to play it. So uh, I think that he was very, very much influenced by Pete and Pete and he and his relationship was very, very close. Um, and and they were great friends as well as, as um, loving brothers. Um he has that innate um, ability to make quick changes in the middle of a song that um, only musicians like Peter and Chris could do. Um, wow. It's, it was when he sent me the track and he was, you know, doing his, uh, his melody that like he was kind of thinking I could just, I, every time he do it, I was like, it's fucking Chris. I mean, it's, you know, it's bizarre to me, wow. but um, it, it just was, it, it was really special, man. I, I, I love, I loved, loved receiving a song he sent me two other tracks that we're talking about um doing um next year unless i go to nashville here in a couple of months and, and knock them out but really kind of depends on what happens with covid but right. you know we, we we've talked about he and i doing a whole record together um of acoustic blues tracks so um and and it'll be interesting to me you know i never wrote with chris um, I, I only got to know Chris kind of, you know, through hanging out in a shoe store and, and becoming friends with him that way. And then going years later, becoming musicians and, and, and being around in the same environment. So mm-hmm. I would assume that the opportunity that I've had with Pete was very similar to write, writing with Chris, but I'll never know. Um, sure. it just was magical. And, and I, and I look forward to doing it again. He's, he's a lovely, lovely human being. He's got a great soul, great heart. Uh, and, and, you know, he's a, he's a, he's heartbroken, you know, he's lost his best friend and his brother. And, um, and I think that's something that, you know, maybe this song allowed him to, like I said earlier, exercise some of those demos, those, those, uh, demons rather. Right on, right on. So everybody, again, we are here with Kevin Martin from Candlebox and we're talking about let me down easy, the brand new single, uh, that they just put out, just dropped and man, it is awesome. And again, it's collaboration with, uh, Peter Cornell. Awesome. Did Peter work on any of the other songs that are going to be on this new album or was it just let me down easy? Just let me down easy. Okay. But I did send him, I did send him all the pre-production demos uh, of the rest of the record. You know, I was like, Hey, listen, if you're hearing something that you think is whack, you know, let me know. He's like, no, man, I think you guys are going in the right direction. It's killer. Cause we wanted to make sure, like I said, this song was a catalyst for so much of the album. Um, so I wanted to make sure that there was some sort of uh, uh, continuity um, if you will, to the sound and, and, and the energy and the vibe that we were going with, let me down easy. So, um, you know, I, the record is all, you know, inspirational tracks, uh, by, by bands that inspired us. Um, and, and that's kind of, so it's a reflection on those influences, um, if you will. And, uh, and, you know, uh, there are, there are two tracks on this record that, um, that are just swampy and dirty like this. And, and the next one's called nothing left to lose, which will come out at you know some point this year, I think we'll probably release, release it as another single that, um, you know, was really along the, you know, the lines of a motorhead track because I love motorhead and I wanted something that felt that way. So Pete really inspired this album and I wanted to make sure that what I was sending him, he felt, um, you know, continued that, that path. That's awesome. I love it. And man, you talk about Bruff, Buffalo Springfield. Oh, they're one of my favorite bands, man. Oh my God. Yeah. I cannot wait to hear the spin you put on that. So that being said, you know, you talked about some of the covers that are going to be on this new album. Did you find yourself as a singer songwriter trying to stay true to the roots of those songs? Or was it something where you uh, tried to totally uh, rearrange the composition of those songs, if you will? No, we wanted to keep them relatively true to their um, to their tone or their their you know uh, timbre, if you will. Um, I, I sing the way I sing, so I'm I'm not going to sound like Bono. I'm not going to sound like you know Freddie Mercury. I'm having my buddy David Giles um, do the uh, David Bowie part for that uh, Under Pressure track, uh, or Dave Giles rather. He's a cat out of London, but you know um, I just you know I'll I'll do it the way I do it, and uh, and hopefully it's you know somewhat um 
I guess, uh, respectable <laughs> to the track itself. You know, I, I never know. I, I just kind of do what I do. And, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I think you're going to do just fine, Kevin. As far, <laughs> as, far as uh, the original, you know, music that you're going to be putting out on this new album, what should people that have been like long time Candlebox fans expect uh, in terms of like other work that you've done? Because obviously the last one, Disappearing in Airports, vastly different from your self-titled album that came out back in the day. You know, the one that I easily wore out, you know, um, yeah. sound wise. What are we kind of looking at? Is it going to be more consistent, maybe, with the kind of sound that you exhibited with uh, with Peter with a uh, "Let Me Down Easy"? Uh, it's got some of that. Um, it's got um, some progressive tracks to it, um, some elements of of the more the musical ability of the band. Um, so, uh, but again, it's it's another extension of you know the last seven albums that Candlebox has done. It's it's evolved. Um, the songs are evolving. The, the lyrics have evolved. Um, I think we've evolved as human beings, the band. Um, and we've certainly gotten better as musicians as, as the time has come with us playing together. You know, we've, we've become better um, bandmates. Uh, so I think that's uh, represented on the album as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that really um, it's just an extension of, of what we've done. Um, you'll find elements of the debut album on it, which, you know, the, is the blues and, and rock side of this. Um, but, you know, we, we always kind of push ourselves a little bit further. And I, there's, I think there's only one ballad on this record. Um, so that's a bit new for me. I usually have one or, or two or three. So, yeah. Right on, right on. Now, so I, I saw the lyric video for this. Uh, and obviously, with the times that we're in right now, it's it's very hard for anyone to work in close proximity to one another. But have you guys uh, already looked at doing any official music videos, more on like the theatrical side? I know you like to play live. I know live is you know, your wheelhouse. We haven't had that. Are, are you looking at putting out any more kind of uh, music videos in support of these other uh, tracks that are going to be on this new album? We are. We're, we're, we're actually talking about doing a live streaming show um, either this month or uh, next month out here in Los Angeles. So it really depends on what the um, the restrictions for travel are when coming from the East Coast to the West Coast and going back because Brian and Island are both out there. Brian's in Philly and Island's in Baltimore. Um, right. So if the restrictions are that they still have to quarantine for 14 days when they come home, we don't really want to do that to them. It's not fair of us. So We'll probably wait until those restrictions are lifted. They'll come out here. We're going to track at this house out in Malibu that Bob Dylan used to own and do a, you know this live streaming feed concert, which we're looking forward to doing. Um, so we'll rehearse for a few days with that, play some of the new songs in that, uh, in that um, show, and then uh, maybe knock out a couple of the tracks in the studio that's out there as well. So we're kind of kicking that idea around. But, you know, lyric videos are the easiest things for us to do right now. Um, right. But if... If it comes to it and, we, and the guys can come out here for a week, we'll certainly knock out a full band video. Um, you know, maybe it'll just be the live video that that we do that, this for the streaming concert. Well, we, I mean, we have like 16, 17 cameras for that. So we may be able to knock out a video for that. Who knows? I, I really don't know. That's pretty cool. You know what? I'm, I'm def I'm going to have to bug Brian. I got to come out there, man. I don't know how he's going to get out there, if he's going to drive, if he's going to fly. But, man, <laughs> What, what, you, you, oh my God! Whose house are you going to be at again? Who? What, what's it's his house? At, it's, it's his house that Dylan used to own out here. And, Bob and Dylan it overlooks. Are yeah, you yeah. freaking kidding me, man? Oh my God! Yeah. Well, I mean, you might as well with some of the other you know classic covers you're talking about doing. Man, you know it would be cool to hear you try to do Freddie Mercury though, man. Oh my God! That's <laughs> well, I I am doing Freddie, but you know I mean I don't have that kind of split voice thing that he's got on those high notes. I can hit him, but you know. I Who in the like world it. does, man? That's crazy. That's ambitious. That kid from Canada. That kid from Canada sounds just like him. I don't know if you've ever seen his I videos. I have. I have yeah. seen him. I think Adam Lambert does a pretty good job. He's not bad. He does a great job. Yeah. yeah. Adam Adam can kill it. Yeah. Oh, and he's a great my. performer. Yeah. Well, yes, he is. Yes, he is. All right. So, uh, obviously, we got this album. It is all locked and loaded, man. This thing is ready for launch. And, uh, of course, we have this beautiful single that you put out with Peter Cornell. Um, what else is going on? Have you, let me ask you this, because 
a lot of artists seem to have this in common because no one expected this lull in the timeline of 2020 to occur. You know, everyone had like, you know, albums either already done or they were working on and they're all ready to rock and roll. And, you know, of course, everyone has their own style, you know, in terms of when you're touring, you're not writing, you know, you're touring, you're focusing on the tour. Some artists, as you well know, you know, they're writing their next two, three albums, you know, while they're touring. So what is it like in, in the world of Kevin Martin? Have you already written new music that is not going to appear on this next album that could come out later on? No, I, I don't do that. I'm not that I'm not that prolific. Um, <laughs> I don't. Uh, I, I I mean, it's it's I, it, it amazes me that, you know, Island and Brian and Sean and all these guys that I play, you know, in a band with they're they're all constantly playing guitar constantly playing the drums constantly playing bass i got these two guitars have been sitting here i mean they probably have an inch of dust on them you know from you know hanging up there for the past four months i very rarely write um write a record until i'm ready to write a record um sometimes that happens on the road it sound checks sometimes uh it happens when i come home from a tour and i just happen to be sitting around, I, I, something's bugging me, I'll pick up an instrument, but I really, really don't focus on writing records when, when I'm, uh, when I'm not ready. So uh, I'm, I'm really kind of lazy that way. And I probably don't deserve the success I've had because of my, um, my lack of uh, motivation, but um, I'm one of those musicians, man. I just have not, I've, I've not been able to do it without um, the desire to do it. I can't force it. Well, no. And I mean, that's the way it should be. It's got to come natural because otherwise it probably will feel forced. I mean, of course, to you, but then to your fans as well. But uh, yeah. you are humble. You are way too humble, Kevin. I swear. I love Thanks, that man. about you, man. Yeah, no, that's very, very cool. Well, I know you got better things to do than to talk to me all day, even <laughs> though uh, I would love to talk to you all day, man. But uh, oh, man, I'm so excited. What's the name of this new album again? Now that it is titled? It's called Wolves. Wolves. I yeah. love it, man. I love it. Oh, man, that's so cool. Well, everybody, again, we are here with uh, one of my favorite people on the planet, Kevin Martin, frontman of Candlebox. <laughs> I'm sincere, man. I am sincere. And uh, they got their brand new single out there right now. And uh, you got to go check that out called uh, Let Me Down Easy. It's a, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's a work that he did with Peter Cornell, which uh, I think is just so freaking cool. Kevin, thank you for joining us on Rock Titan Live today, man. Oh, my pleasure, brother. It's nice chatting with you again. Yeah, man. No, absolutely. All right. So, everybody, uh, if you enjoyed this podcast, which I have every confidence in the world that you have, just go on out to YouTube.com <laughs> forward slash Rock Titan and subscribe, and you will see this. But on top of that, I am going to go straight over to Brian Quinn's place, right from here, right from this interview. I'm going to bang on his door. I'm going to get the album, and I am going to have an album review out on RockTitan.tv way before anybody else does. So, <laughs> Good luck with that, man. Yeah, thank you for the heads up on that, Kevin. Yeah, I'm going to harass him, so there will be a full review out on Wolves on RockTitan.tv. And again, I am Scotty J. You're watching Rock Titan Live. We're out. No!